Hi, Scott Nelson, Senior Wealth Manager at Boulay Financial Advisors. Series I savings bonds have been pay- making headlines lately for the eye-popping interest rates they're currently paying. How eye-popping? Well, how about a current 9.62% on an annual basis? Are Series I savings bonds the safe, high-earning investment that you have been searching for, or are they just too good to be true? If you got a couple minutes, I'll walk you through the fine print of what you might have assumed was an otherwise simple investment. The first thing to understand is that these bonds are actually paying 4.81% for the six-month period of May through October 2022. The 9.62% is a doubling convention done by us investment folks to make the bonds returns comparable to that of other investments. These bonds are unlikely to pay that rate, though, because their interest rate is adjusted every May and November to reflect the current rate of inflation. In fact, the entire interest rate these bonds pay is dependent on the level of inflation. We all know that's running historically high at the moment, but what will the rate of inflation be and what interest rate will these bonds pay when it gets reset in November? Well, that's anybody's guess. Nonetheless, if you think inflation is going to stick around for a while and these Series I savings bonds still sound good, you do have the problem that every person is restricted to buying only $10,000 of these bonds every year. And that's done through opening an account at treasurydirect.gov. You do have a second option, and that's to request that up to $5,000 of your tax refund be paid to you in paper Series I savings bonds. Those are the only two ways that you can purchase these bonds. Now note that the restriction of $10,000 is per account at treasurydirect.gov per year. And while you can only have one account at treasurydirect.gov, Nothing is stopping you from setting up an account for every member of your family and annually purchasing them the $10,000 of Series I savings bonds. Well, except for Fluffy the Cat, since each account holder must have a unique Social Security number. Also appreciate that Series I savings bonds are intended to be savings vehicles, not some investment uh, that you play with in your portfolio. The bonds have a holding restriction that prohibits cashing them in for one year. If you decide to cash them in within first five years, three months of interest income will be deducted. You can transfer these bonds to someone else through treasurydirect.gov. If you have the paper bonds, you're going to have to fill out some U.S. Treasury paperwork to retitle them. Getting down to the nitty gritty, these bonds pay interest every month for 30 years, which will be credited to your treasurydirect.gov account. And also know that what the government gives, the government takes, interest on the Series I bonds is taxable income on your federal tax return, but it is not taxable on a state tax return. Also, you do have the option to pay the tax either annually, as it is earned, or wait and pay it all at once when you cash in the bonds. For folks with incomes currently below $150,000, they get a tax break if they cash the bonds in to pay for qualified college education expenses. On this note, those educational expenses do need to be claimed on your tax return in the same year you cash in the bonds. So as you can see, Series I savings bonds really have too many restrictions to play a role in your investment portfolio. They were created to help folks of modest means build up long-term savings that keep up with inflation. Still, they can be a patriotic way to save some extra dough, and they make a nice educational gift for some young person whom you'd like to teach about the importance of saving. I hope this video has answered most of your questions about Series I savings bonds. If you have more questions, the best place to find the answers is at the treasurydirect.gov website. Until next time, be well and take care.